what's up guys I just finished watching four hours of wrestling uh, tonight was indeed the first night of the Monday Night War version 2.0 and uh, I watched TNA first uh, when it came on at 8 and then uh, or 9 I should say and then I watched uh, Raw after that I wanted to try to support TNA a little bit because you know I want this to be a good competition between the two of these uh, companies and uh, I think if their ratings got a little higher, the WWE might try to improve a little bit. I mean, I know WWE is doing good now, being that it's WrestleMania. But usually after Mania, it kind of dwindles down. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and review uh, TNA in this video. And then I'll make another video to review Raw. And TNA opens with Hogan and Abyss. Uh, they come out. Hogan's talking about how... You know, TNA is going to make a big impact on Monday night. And he goes ahead and starts the match right off the bat with Flair and AJ. So right off the bat, we get the Hogan, AJ, or Hogan, Abyss, AJ, and Flair match. And the match is going on. All of a sudden, the lights go out. And you hear Sting's music. I'm like, awesome. So we got to see the return of the icon, Sting. And Sting comes out. And it looks like he's going to help Hogan and Abyss out, but that's not what happens whatsoever. He takes that plastic foam-covered baseball bat and whips the hell out of both Hogan and Abyss. Sting leaves, and then Flair and AJ go to town on him. Hogan gets busted open. He's laying in the ring. Flair and AJ take off. Hogan's like, listen guys, this match isn't over. We're going to finish it later tonight, and it's going to be a no-DQ match. So after that, Sting is confronted by Dixie Carter. She's like, give me an explanation. What the hell are you doing out there? Sting grabs her by the neck, pushes her up against the wall, and says, I don't owe you anything. And that's it. Uh, we get to see Brooke Hogan. And she's, in, she's on this show an awful lot. They're showing her in the crowd. And then you get to see a segment with her and Jennifer, which I guess Jennifer is Hogan's uh, girlfriend. And she's going on saying, oh, Hogan's not, he's not okay. He says he is, but he's really not. And that's not the last we see of her. Kazarian comes out, cuts a great promo about the X Division. Talks about how, you know, he's been gone for all these years. He was kind of doubting himself, but he's not doubting himself anymore. Uh, you know, there's a war, Monday Night War, and the X Division is going to uh, aid in the win of that war. And... He basically goes on to say how he wants the Warriors of the X Division to lead the war into battle. And uh, Daniels comes out saying how he's going to be the leader, not that guy. And then Doug Williams comes out and he's like, yeah, the X Division is alive and well because I'm the champ. Bishop comes out and immediately makes a triple threat match for the X Division title. A really good match. Uh, a lot of great pinning combinations in this match. Very impressive. Uh, the time for the match was pretty short, but for what we had, it was really good. Uh, and Doug Williams wins. Uh, right after that, Shannon Moore comes out, attacks Doug Williams, and then Bischoff makes a match for uh, Doug Williams and uh, Shannon Moore at the uh, Destination X pay-per-view. Uh, D- Dixie Carter, she's pissed about what happened to her, so she makes a match for Sting, but she doesn't let anybody know who the opponent's going to be. Sting's not going to know until we know. We didn't get to see a triple threat for the uh, Divas Knockout Tag Team Championship. Taylor Wilde, Serena, Beautiful People, and Tara and Angelina Love. The Beautiful People win with the aid of Daphne. Not a really good match. Pope has a promo. He's going to talk about his match with Desmond Wolf. that's supposed to air tonight, but it didn't take place because Desmond Wolf comes out, attacks his ankle, and they're continuing that ankle storyline so he could not compete uh we didn't get to see jb with the beautiful people they're celebrating with champagne pretty cool whatever then we get to see sting's match and he takes on rvd rvd makes his debut in tna very short match rvd wins like that with the rolling thunder but he might have won the match but sting won the war because sting went to town on rvd he was beating them bad with that bat, and he was and RVD was really selling the blows with the bat very well. And uh, Hogan comes out, tries to get at Sting, but Bubba the Love 
doctor comes out and he's trying to keep Hogan back. Sting is knocking everybody out. Refs, security guards, he's taking that bad news in it like he's in the home run derby. And I really liked it. Sting's becoming a heel. I don't really remember the last time I saw Sting as heel. I don't think I've ever. But uh yeah, it was great to it's great to see this. Sure he's an old man, but you know it's nice to see him um uh, play a different role. You know, he's always played the face for the longest time. I think he might have been a heel back in his four horsemen days, but I really don't remember. My memory's not that good. But uh Sting attacks everybody, it was awesome to see. We didn't get to see Nash and Eric Young. They come out basically to call Hall and Six Pac out. Uh, Nash says that Hogan allowed him to have a match at the next pay-per-view with them. They get one shot. Uh, Eric Bischoff comes out and says, all right, uh, you guys want a, want a contract. You want a big money contract. Well, if you can beat them, you get your big money contract. And if you don't, then you've got to leave TNA and never come back. And during this whole little promo, uh, Six Pac smacks the hell out of Eric Young, and, and they try to go at each other. So Eric Bischoff makes a match immediately. And man, this match was pretty pretty damn brutal. Blow to blow. I mean, these guys were really like punching each other. Or it looked like it was to me. It looked like a shoot match. But uh, I'm sure it probably wasn't. But it looked really good. I love, really love to see these guys go one-on-one -on -one in a real match. I think it would be really great. But Eric Young gets the win. Uh, the Army guys are there. Soldiers, they come out and line up and down the ramp. Angle comes out. Then they go around the ring. Angle's cut the promo about Anderson. Talks about how the soldiers uh, uh, do a lot of things for the country and whatnot. Anderson gets ready to uh, interject, and as he's doing so, Angle immediately runs out, attacks him. Uh, he brings him back out to the ring. He keeps throwing him out the ring, letting the soldiers beat up on Anderson. He gets back in the ring. He gets Angle slammed, and then Angle stands above him in victory. And the soldiers all come in and lift uh, lift Angle up on their shoulders and. Really great. This whole feud with them is fantastic. I'm loving it. I really hope the match delivers. Um, we see try, we see Bubba the Love Sponge trying to convince Hogan not to continue down this path. He gets tired of everybody trying to tell him to stop. Earl Hebner comes in. He wants another chance. Uh, Hogan tells Bubba to not bother him whatsoever. Stay out of his business. He gives Earl another chance. He has to ref the last match, the main event. So that's that. Uh, Beer Money and Jeff Jarrett are seen in the back. Jarrett, apparently there's a match, and uh, Jarrett doesn't understand why Beer Money agreed to this match, especially since Jarrett gave them a chance in TNA. Well, anyways, they start fighting in the back area. It goes out to the ringside area, and then the match actually starts. It's a two-on-one handicap match, Beer Money versus Jarrett. Uh, Mick Foley tr is the guest referee. He tries to slip Jarrett the barbed wire bat. He does slip it to him, but... Uh, before Jarrett can use it, Slick Johnson comes out and grabs it. And he gets distracted, and Beer Money gets the win. Uh, yeah, it was alright. So then, Brooke Hogan uh, inter interrupts Abyss and Hogan while they're talking to each other in the locker room. She's worried. She's crying. Please, Daddy, don't wrestle no more. Let this be your last match. Promise me, Daddy, that you won't wrestle no more. Hogan agrees. And then we have the final... Second half of the match, Flair and AJ versus uh, Hogan and Abyss. No DQ. Wow. Uh, Flair gets busted open right off the bat. He is pouring blood. It's fucking pouring out of his head like a faucet. And you know the funny thing is, Brooke Hogan's crying before the match, don't wrestle. But during this match, she's all like, yay, go daddy. You know, it's like, are you sad that he's wrestling or are you happy that he's wrestling? I mean, I, I didn't get it. But AJ's out there attacking Hogan. Um, and Brooke's like, leave my daddy alone. AJ looks at her and goes, sit down and shut up. I loved it. But anyways, Hogan and Abyss win the match. And right after that, Desmond Wolf comes out to attack uh, Hogan and Abyss. And then the Pope comes out to get Wolf. And then Jeff Hardy makes another return to TNA. He, we last saw him January 4th. Now we see him uh, today, January or March 8th, I should say. And uh, he's attacking Desmond Wolf and AJ Styles. So TNA ends with Jeff Hardy. Uh, I thought it was a pretty good show. Uh, there were a lot of segments like there was last time. But at least there were a lot more matches. And uh, yeah, the matches were short. But, you know, it was pretty good overall. 
Uh, I do have to say that I enjoyed Raw a little bit more. Uh, I think it's because, well, WrestleMania, you know, makes Raw that much better. But uh, I did enjoy Raw a little bit more. But I did not think Impact was bad. I thought it was pretty good. So I thought both promotions did great. Uh, this is my review on Impact. Uh, stay tuned for my review on Raw. Let me know what you guys thought. This is Gold Izzy. Peace out. Modest to the top. Modest at the top.